Hi everyone, Stephen Aitchison here. Today I want to speak about 10 things to drop from your life starting now. Um, so that's what I want to speak about today. First of all, I want to kind of give you a quick story that I thought was quite funny. It tickled me um, this morning. I got another, um, I've got a couple of messages. But over the last couple of months I've got about 10 or 20 messages saying that people are listening to my videos and stuff like that to learn English. I thought as soon as <laughs> as soon as they wrote to me to say they're learning English from my videos, I kind of wrote back and said, "No, don't learn English from me. I'm kind of Scottish uh, English, and you don't <laughs> you don't want to be picking up um, kind of Scottish vernacular." So I can imagine all these people from all over the world <laughs> coming over um, from whatever country they're in, so Hong Kong, Malaysia, um, <laughs> kind of the Philippines, and coming coming over to England. Starting speaking Scottish, saying, hi, how you doing? Can I nut on somebody? Oh, this is brilliant. Um, I could just imagine <laughs> that happening and the English people going, oh, they must be Scottish. So don't try and learn English from me. If you're trying to learn English, don't do it from me. I'm, not, I'm definitely not the best person. Um, learn from the Queen's speech or something like that. Although that's probably not the best. So that just tickled me this morning that people are learning English from um, kind of my videos and stuff like that. <laughs> That was quite funny. Anyway, you know when you get one of your laughing fits and you just can't stop laughing? And you imagine all these people coming right anyway. That's kind of my sense of humour. So, yeah, 10... <laughs> I still, still made me laugh just now. Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention as well, thanks to everybody who went over to positivelifeaffirmations.net yesterday. I gave the correct link out for getting a free download, um, a free MP3, and it's Positive Affirmations. We've been speaking about that over the last few days. So I think over 280 people um, signed up for the free MP3, which is brilliant. So I want to thank everybody um, who downloaded that and hopefully you've listened to it and hopefully you're enjoying it as well. Um, it's a really good one because um, I've got about 60 affirmations there, but I chose one that I think you would all like and, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. So about 280 people, which was brilliant. So I'll put another link down below this video as well after after this live feed. So now I'll get on with it, I've been walking too much. So 10 things to drop from your life starting now. Number one, I can't stop laughing at that, um, kind of thinking about all those people coming over to England and speaking Scottish. Anyway, right, I need to, I'm taking a fight of giggles, I don't know why. Right, calm, calm down. Right, okay, 10, <laughs> ten things to drop from your life starting now. First one, right, this is serious now. First one is to drop the negative people in your life. Now I know I've said that before in some posts and I've done it um, in the image quotes as well. I've said drop the negative people in your life. And it might not be hard to do that if it's uh, kind of family members and stuff. And we spoke about this in a couple of the, the previous videos as well. Um, on the 30 days of change kind of videos about drop, dropping negative people. If you can't do that obviously if they're family Obviously you can uh, uh, avoid contact or counteract whatever they say negatively. You counteract it with a positive. Because negative people in your life are kind of draining your energy. Literally draining your energy. So it's best to drop those kind of people. And I'm not talking about people who who are your, your best friends or something and there's something happened in their life and they become depressed or something's happened and they're really down for some reason. That's not the type of negative people I'm talking about. I'm talking about those people, like in the workplace, you always get, oh, they're always negative, they've always got a bad story, they're always gossiping, they're always speaking behind people's backs, and they're always doing it, it just seems to be their nature. That's the type of people I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about kind of your best friends who have kind of suddenly had something happen to them and dropping them, it's not about that. It's dropping the people who are constantly negative and draining your energy. Every time you see them, you just go, oh God, and just drains you. Totally. So that's that's number one. Number two is to drop the mistakes you've made in the past. Everybody's made mistakes in their life. And the very reason you're here right now is because of all the mistakes you've made and all the things you've done that's, that's been good in your life as well. But primarily it's because of the mistakes you've made and the mistakes have taught you lessons along the way. Maybe some very hard lessons along the way. But nevertheless, they've taught you. And if you've not learned from your mistakes, obviously you should, we should be learning all the time from our mistakes, just analysing 
why something went wrong, why a relationship went wrong, why you kind of at work, um, something happened at work, why that went wrong. Just analyse and learn from your mistakes. But the key is to drop them. Don't dwell on them all the time because it's really difficult to move forward in life if you dwell on your mistakes all the time. You've got to accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes. You're a human being. You're going to make mistakes. So as long as you learn from them, then it's a brilliant opportunity for you to move forward. So that's number two. Drop the mistakes you've made in your life. Everybody makes them. You're going to make them in the future, but you're going to grow from your mistakes as well. Number three, drop the past. The past has a habit of eating into a present and eating into a future as well. It eats into the energy of our present time, eats into the energy of the future time and gives us nowhere to go if we're constantly thinking about the past. Now I know some horrible things maybe have happened to you in the past and you, you can obviously just drop drop that from your life but what you can do is you can try, try and control the emotions surrounding that now, I've obviously had some horrible things happen to me as well, and it's been difficult to kind of drop that and just say, OK, I need to get on with it. One of the things I found, and this is just a little trick, and it's just a, a trick inside a toolbox that you can use as other things, therapy, uh, if it's been a really traumatic event that you can't seem to let go of, obviously you need to seek professional help. But for the smaller things, what I've done is I've got a... This might sound kind of weird, but I've got a mental kind of chest, a big kind of wooden chest inside my mind. It's a, my mind chest. And what I do, if there's anything that I need to kind of drop and say, OK, I need to stop thinking about that and just drop it. So inside my mind, I open up this big wooden chest, a big, huge wooden chest, and then I put that event. So say, for example, um, Okay, I'll just give you one from my life. I can't think of one just now. Um, but I was bullied at school for about three years. And I'm not saying, oh, boo-hoo, you have to feel sorry for me, because it's nothing to do with that. Um, I've got over it, and nobody else should be kind of bothered about it. So, but for, for ages, I kind of, kind of constantly thought about that, and I thought, oh, that's why I have no confidence, that's why I have no this. This was kind of years ago. And so what I, I've done is I've kind of packaged that up, that bullying from the past, and put it into the wooden chest. It's in a ball in the wooden chest. It's in the very corner. It's in the corner, and there's loads of kind of things piled up on it now because I've put loads of things in that chest. And I would suggest you try that as well. It's good. It's a good technique to use. A bit of um, kind of cognitive behavioural therapy. That's kind of one of the tools um, that we kind of used when I was doing the alcohol counselling as well. Is, and it really works. And you just put everything in there because what happens is it gets it out of your mind, it gets it stored somewhere so it's not totally out of your mind. So you're not saying, okay, forget about it altogether, it's never going to be there, you want to erase it from your memory. You can't erase it from your memory, it's difficult to do that. So I put it into that chest, close the wooden chest over, and uh, ready for putting something else in. And then it never comes out to kind of resurface. And sometimes I have to go back and put it back in again. So that's an example from the past, and I've used that technique for years. Now, and it's a brilliant one for getting things out of your mind. Um, the, yeah, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Just um, try the wooden chest kind of technique. That's a wee tip for you. The fourth one to drop from your life is drop the self-portrait. And by self-portrait, I mean, obviously, when, when there's a painting, when you've got a kind of painting of yourself or somebody's got a painting of themselves, that's a representation of that person at that particular time in their life. And we all change kind of through our lives, but what seems to happen is we have different faces for different people. So this face I've got just now that I'm talking to, I speak to, I speak to my mum and dad like this, I speak to my sisters, I speak to my friends, I speak to my wife like this as well. I'm the same kind of with everybody, uh, warts and all. So you've kind of seen some of that, I swear sometimes, a lot of people don't like that, but if you don't like me, it doesn't matter. Uh, why, why should I care if you don't like me? You shouldn't be in my life if you don't like me and you don't like that energy. So that's cool. And if you feel like that as well, then that's cool as well. Just be the same with every single person. So drop the self-portrait image and just be yourself. Drop all the masks. Drop the masks that you have for different people. Or you might feel 
kind of intimidated by certain people and you put on a different face, but it's not a true representation of yourself. So drop all the masks and drop the self-portrait image and just try and be yourself. And the first thing to do to do with that to, is to become aware of it. Become aware of when you speak to certain people, you act a certain way, you act a different way from what you do with your friends, your kind of family um, and people like that. So that is number four. Number five, now this is going to sound, some of it's going to sound harsh anyway, but number five is drop feeling sorry for yourself. Now I know you're going to go, come back and say, I I've got a lot to feel sorry for myself about. This has happened, this has happened, that's happened. Listen, we've all had shit happen in our lives and we all deal with it in different ways. But if you drop feeling sorry for yourself, drop being on the, I call it, my son used to do this when he was really younger, he used to kind of feel sorry for himself all the time. And we always used to say, right, drop being on the poor me train. Because that poor me train is just going nowhere. It doesn't lead to anywhere. It doesn't lead to Happyville. It just leads to Doomsville. If you're always feeling sorry for yourself, you're not going to move your energy forward into the future. And you're not going to have this brilliant energy around you all the time. So again, become aware of when you're kind of feeling sorry for yourself and you're on a poor me train. You need to get off that train right now if you want to move forward with your life. And seriously, I know I'm, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this and that's cool, got big enough shoulders to handle that, but drop feeling sorry for yourself. It's not good for you, it's not good for the people around you, and it's just not good for your energy. So drop that as well. Um, so that's number five. Number six is drop saying yes all the time. Do you ever meet some people that are so nice and they just they want to please you all the time and you ask them to do something they say, yes, I'll do that uh, straight away. And you just think, how do they get time to do that? Because they're stressing themselves out to get something done for somebody else because they don't want to say no to somebody. They don't want to kind of stand up and say, listen, I've no time for this just now, but I might be able to work with you on it or you could pass it to somebody else because they don't have that confidence inside of them. And that is a hard thing to do. If, you, if you're at work and somebody says, and what, your boss says, can you do this? It's hard to say, actually, I can't do that. I've got all this on the plate just now. You're going to have to give it to somebody else. And trust me, when you do that to your boss, it's not, good, it's not going to be a case of, oh, I'm going to get the sack. It's not going to be a case of that. It's going to be a case of your boss saying, they respect you a little more. So they know you're managing your time properly. And uh, they can't come to you with every single little thing to, for you to do and expect you to say yes. You've got to know your boundaries. And know your boundaries not just at work but in personal relationships and everything in every area of your life. So don't say yes or drop saying yes all the time. And the first time you say no to somebody, this is really, really amazing. The first time you say no to somebody, it gives you that sense of power. You've got a kind of a, an almost a powerful surge comes over you and you feel elated throughout the day because you've actually stood up for yourself and said, listen, no, I can't do it and you're going to have to go to somebody else or no, I don't want this relationship or no, I don't like the way you treat me. So drop being or saying yes all the time to people. That's a big one. And when you do that, it really, really empowers you. And that kind of ties into number seven are we on number seven ties into number seven which is drop the people pleasing stop trying to people please all the time because again it kind of ties into what i've said earlier you have different faces for different people and you're trying to please different people all the time and if you're not yourself it comes across as disingenuous so you're not you're not being your true self and if you're not being your true self you've not got that true energy inside of you and it's really difficult to live live your life that way. It's extremely difficult if you're trying to people please all the time. You've got to accept the fact that some people are not going to like you. I accept the fact that probably thousands of people don't like me. They think I'm a bit of a dick on the, on the video and they just go, oh, he's a bit of an idiot. I don't like him. But there's also thousands of people that do like me. But to be honest, the only people that matter in my life are my friends and my family and my close kind of work colleagues and stuff like that. That's the only people that matter in my life. If anybody else doesn't like me, why should I care? Why should you care if people don't like you, if you don't know them, if they're not in your life, if they're not involved in your life in any way? And if there's somebody close to you like that, then you try and resolve it. 
And if they, if they still don't like you after that, then that's cool, you just let it go. But stop trying to people please, because you're not being true to yourself. You've been very disingenuous with yourself, and it's going to be hard to move forward from that as well. The other thing, again, this is going to be a bit controversial. Number eight is to drop saying the right thing. The people, people have gone mad in the world. It's just gone crazy. You can't say, like, I, I said to somebody, um, when was that? It was a couple of weeks ago. Um, they were talking about the weight. I was um, doing some kind of coaching of some kind. They were talking about the weight. And I, I said, I mentioned the word fat. I said, so um, are you fat? Then I, I asked them the question, are you fat? And they said, no. They, they got quite offended. They said, no, I'm, I'm actually overweight. I said, so, and so she, told, she told me her weight. And I said, so you are fat then? And it it's, it's kind of hits you, like the, the kind of truth like that kind of hits you. And it, it certainly worked, it kind of it worked from that point of view because it works on a different kind of level. So and it, she, she, she got really offended at first and then said, if you're using the word overweight, it's just because you're, you're trying to be PC and everybody's trying to be PC nowadays. And it's just ridiculous. Um, so if you kind of use those kind of words and you're using something, I'm not seeing being racist or uh, anything like that. I'm not I'm not talking about those kind of things, but the words are trying to kind of ban in the English language. Like I read in the, the New York Times, somebody was trying to stop the word being used in Tesla was dinosaur and something else. I read this uh, kind of last year because it was no longer PC. And I thought, what the hell is all that about? And there's loads of words like that that everybody uses every day and think, oh, it's not very PC, you can't use that anymore. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. If you if you say a word, as long as it's not offending people, then then can you use that? And um, but people are trying to be they're getting mollycoddled now. We're, we're mollycoddling everybody too much. We can't call somebody fat if they're fat. Now that's kind of rid ridiculous to me. And I know again that's going to be controversial, but you have to be honest with yourself. If you're fat, you're fat. When I uh, last year I was fat. I was overweight, I was about um, 15 and a half, 16 stone. I said to myself, okay, I'm fat, I need to do something about it. And again, somebody said, well, you're not fat, you're just overweight. I said, no, I'm fat. I'm actually fat, I've got kind of layers of fat around me, that's what fat means. And But saying that word to myself, I'm fat, made me do something about it. If I said to myself, oh, you're just a little bit overweight, that's bollocks, it's rubbish. So drop trying to say the right thing all the time. Obviously, don't offend People, if it's going to offend people too much, don't say it. But that's that's just my feeling on the topic. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you can't do that. That's ridiculous. Um, the next one, number nine, is drop the limiting beliefs. We've all got limiting beliefs in our life. Every single person. I've got them. You've got them. My mum and dad's got them. My friends have got them. My children have got them. But the trick is to recognising your limiting beliefs and trying to drop them. Or at least trying to install new beliefs. If you bear with me a second. Sorry that was the phone going off. That's how you know we're live here. Obviously we are live because it's Facebook Live. Right. Okay, one sec. Sorry about this. I'm going to be one second. Just bear with me. Stay there. Stay there. Don't go. Right, back. Sorry about that. So you managed to stay so it's a couple of years. Do apologise for that. Okay, so drop the limiting beliefs. Basically, you've got to recognise what limiting beliefs you have about yourself. And when you recognise them, you can do something about it. And I've spoke about that in a past video if you watch 30 Days of Change videos. So if you just click on videos on the top of this page, you'll see all the 30 Days of Change videos. So that's... Uh, a really good thing if you can recognise your limiting beliefs and just try and drop them or install new beliefs about your life as well. And the last one, number 10, is drop worrying about the future. You can't do anything about the future. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So the only reason people worry is what might happen. And usually when somebody tends to worry, is they, they worry about 
the bad things that might happen. But you can turn that around and say, um, okay, what is the good things that might happen in the future? But not when people do that, because that's not called worrying. That's called wishing. But uh, it should, we should turn it around on the head, that all this worrying, and say, what we tend to do is think of the worst thing that could happen. But then what you could do is turn it around and think about what is the best thing that could happen about a particular situation. And that's what you've got to do as well. If you're always worrying about the future, you're always going to be in a state of anxiety. The energy around about you is going to be in a, in a flux. It's going to be in a state of anxiety as well. So if you can try and recognise when you're worrying about the future and recognise the thoughts about your future as well that's pessimistic and try and turn around and say, OK, what is the best thing that could happen? And that really changes your whole energy around about you. So that is the 10 things you should drop from your life starting right now. So I hope it's helped. I hope I've not offended people too much. Um, I know I probably have and a lot of people uh, may be a little bit peed off um, with me. But hopefully not. Hopefully it's given you kind of something to think about as well. And just before um, I go as well, if anybody is interested in growing the Facebook page like this one, it's grown to nearly 2.6 million likes now, which is amazing. Um, I'm going to be doing a webinar at, um, what time are we on, in about seven hours time. And I'll put the link to the webinar if you're interested in growing your Facebook page, because um, we've got a product at Your Digital Formula, but we're doing a free webinar tonight as well. So if you're interested in growing your Facebook page, if you've got a business of any kind, we're going to be doing a free webinar in about seven hours time. So I'm just going to look at a couple of comments. Um, Shannon LaPlante, LaPlante, where can I find the 10 things? I came on late. You'll be able to see it in this video, Shannon. You'll be able to see it again, but I'll also put a link to a blog post I've written as well, so I'll do that. Um, okay. Stacey Fraser saying, no, you're great. And so hopefully that's about not being offended. So hopefully you're not being offended. Thanks, Stacey. Um, thank you, Stephen Lenmore, from you today. You're so amazing. Uh, Mary Grace. I'll miss the second part of your name there. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Cindy King. Oh, Cindy, how are you doing? Um, thank you. Have a great day. Will you talk to David Cameron and send him? Oh, I missed that comment. Maria Ricardo. Maria, hi from Glasgow. Excellent. You're just down the road from me. Um, Barbara Hara. We'll watch for that link. Thanks, Steve. No problem at all. Right. So for now, um, yeah, for now, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. If you like this, leave a comment below and share this video as well. So just click on the share button, share it with your friends, who, whoever you might think would like it, and just share it on your page or share it on your kind of profile and just say, oh, this guy's amazing or this guy's a bit of a dick, you need to watch him. So until next time, namaste.